Hello, and welcome to our weekly program, Cricket Central with Dr. Wes Masood. I'm here in New Jersey, USA, and with my co-host, Mr. Afzal Hussain in Birmingham, UK. Viewers, every week we talk about cricket, mostly its technical aspect, how the team is doing, what players are performing, what are not, and things like this. But today our guest is a bit different. Our topic is a bit different. We all know that what's going on with Pakistan cricket, and we all sad about it. You know, we are overseas Pakistanis, but we have a strong link with our motherland. Most of us were born there, and we have family there, and there's a strong bond, and that cannot be broken. But one more strong bond has been cricket. We all love cricket, and that's a strong bond. But that bond is very weak now, about to be broken. We all about all sad about it. And that's what we're going to talk about today. How it is affecting us, how it's affecting our bond with Pakistan, and how it's affecting the community. And my guests today, they have something in common. They are professional people, they are family people, and they are community leaders. They know the pulse of the community they represent either professionally or their community. So let's start with our guest. He's a surgeon. He's currently in Nottingham. He's enjoying a family event there, but he, we are thankful that he took some time to talk about cricket because he is very passionate about cricket. So Irfan, welcome to our program. Thanks for joining us. And what exactly you are doing over there now, not right now? Is the party going on? What kind of party is there? So good, uh, good evening, everybody. Uh, it's a uh, late night uh, in the UK. So wherever you are, good afternoon, evening, uh, uh, good morning, uh, accordingly. Uh, I am at a, uh, a, a family event. And in fact, my colleague who is sitting with me, it's his 25th anniversary. So we are all celebrating that. But uh, he himself is a very cricketing and enthusiast. And I thought that uh, you, you have to take time out. And he just said, yes, I'm going to be talking about that. So very rightly said, uh, Aves, uh, uh, although I would say that cricketing has not been my, uh, you know, first game. I, I like athletics and squash, but uh, we we played cricket in the streets, uh, uh, you know, with the breaking uh, uh, window panes here and there to from there to college. And then, you know, uh, we, we have started cricketing here also. And uh, uh, you have got Apna there. Uh, we have got Apne here, uh, the association. And we have brought cricket into that. And uh, I can tell you that how involved we are, that we have been playing with India for some time. And we have won 2 one with, from them, uh, from their association, which is Bapu here. So I forgot to tell our viewers that Dr. Irfan Akhtar is the past president of APNE. APNE is a doctor's organization in the UK. And he is, I thought you were president last year or a year before that? Last year, yeah. yeah. Okay. So I'm the immediate right. past president. APNE, if I may tell everybody that, uh, it's a, it's a big, big organization now. We started about six years ago, but now we have got over 2,000 paid members of that. And it's a democratic organization. We get the elections and everything. And in fact, our elections are coming now. And I have uh, worked both as general secretary as well as uh, two years of my presidentship. So, so this, you this are, whole association of cricket was during that time. Really connected to the community, doctor's community particularly. And I'm seeing that your picture Absolutely. on Facebook and you talk about cricket. Tell me how they are feeling about the I would say demise of Pakistan cricket. Yeah, I think you have chosen the word very rightly. It is a extremely painful. Uh, we we feel that the players are good. Uh, we feel that there is a lot of talent. We feel that uh, there is a big potential and big aspirations from the community. And when we see these kind of results, uh, one after the other, and there is no respite to that, it pains. It pains to the core. You you talk to your colleagues in theaters, in hospitals, and you know the doctors sit down that, and have, we have the common chat that let's stop talking about cricket. And this is bad. Uh, you know it is something which joins the next generation. We inspire them to play cricket, and this is in our blood now. But uh, when we see what is happening down there, it is extremely painful. Uh, and I must say that uh, this uh, pessimism which has come across is something new. Uh, it wasn't there. You would always see a one bad match, but then the team would pick up. But this is then going downhill and downhill and downhill. 
And with the current prevailing situation in the country as such, perhaps it's part that the whole society is, uh, is feeling the, the burden of that. I hope not. You know, I'm old enough. We grew up when the hockey was at top. Pakistan was a world champion, Olympic champion, like a champion, trophy champion, a nation champion, everything. Pakistan was a champion and we were king in squash. And now Pakistan hockey team doesn't even qualify for Olympic. How sad is that? And we Absolutely. are worried about that my cricket is going the same way. It's very, very worrisome, right? Absolutely. Absolutely. So I, I, I really hope uh, that uh, it, it, it kind of uh, may be a catalyst to development of uh, other sports. Uh, we are kind of losing hope on cricket. And I really hope that other athletic sports, which may not be as cumbersome or as costly as cricket is, start developing in, in the country, uh, such as javelin throw. You know, we have got uh, an Olympic champion now. Uh, uh, and that kind of stimulus, you know, brings in other athletic sports into that. And our obsession with the cricket and continuous depression which they are giving us uh, gives us another kind of a frontier to enjoy ourselves. Okay, we, thanks. So that's what you do. But I think for us, there is no other sport we can play as cricket. And uh, I look like you have another guest with you who would like to say something. And uh, I'm sure that he's also as passionate about cricket as you are and maybe more than that. So Thank let me introduce Dr. him. First. Thank you. Yeah. So thank you, Dr. Avais. Uh, my name is Dr. Habib Haider. I'm a consultant acute physician and I'm also the part of current APNE executive team and education lead. So thank you, Mr. Fan Akhtar, to also give me this opportunity as he came to this family event with us. So yes, I'm really passionate about the cricket. And as he said that we are the team and I was the captain at that time when we defeated Bapio and after two years in terms of the final match, two to one, basically. So yes, it was really sad to see what's going on in Pakistan cricket. And as overseas Pakistani, we always actually have a emotional link with Pakistan. And cricket is the only thing which normally help us in terms of our networking and join us together, basically. But as uh, Mr. Fan Akhtar rightly said, that most of the time when we discuss about the cricket and people always hesitate to discuss anything nowadays, they thought it's like a lot of pain, to be honest, and especially we always say when Pakistan not performing very well, they're going to perform in the final and they will win the final. But I think time have gone now, to be honest. Everybody can see what's happening in terms of uh, one match to another match. And unfortunately, it is. We wish uh, that hopefully things will get better and cricket will not end up like happened to uh, squash or hockey or other sports. So let's hope for the best. Yeah, thank you. Let's hope so. And really appreciate you guys. And uh, you took some time. And uh, thank you very much. And uh, go and enjoy your rest of your party. Thank you so much. So I'm very happy and thankful to our next guest, Dr. Bob Rao. Dr. Bob Rao, he is in academics. He is a professor in dermatology. And he is one of the renowned dermatologists all over the world. But at the same time, we're not talking about his professional career right now. We are talking about his connection with the community, particularly physician community in Pakistan and also in US particularly, because he is the president-elect of APNA, the biggest professional organization overseas Pakistani has. So Babar, welcome to the program and thank you for giving us time. So tell me, I know you are a physician, you're a doctor, you're a professor, but again, you are very well connected to Pakistan community. Tell me how you are connected to Pakistan community, particularly with physicians. So being very active member of uh, APNA, which is a Pakistani doctors organization in North America, and we are thousands of us, by attending their meeting, local and uh, their national meeting, going with them to international meetings, especially Pakistan. So it's really, we kind of flow together or we just, uh, we are together everywhere with Pakistani community. Doctors are not doctors because of APNA, very well connected. Okay, thank you. So recently you participated successfully in APNA's election. Now you are president-elect, not just a local chapter, but whole USA and Canada. So I'm sure this was not an easy campaign. You have to travel. So tell me very, very briefly that what part of North America did you travel and met physicians over there? 
So almost everywhere, like you know, who goes to Oklahoma City, I went there. I went to Kentucky. I went to like um, uh, Houston, Texas, Alberta, Canada, British Columbia, almost everywhere. And when you're trying to talk about your CV as why should they vote for you, it's kind of boring. What people want to hear is, okay, what else is interesting about you? So there are only two things I could talk at that point and people want to listen. Either if they want to talk about cricket or they sometimes would like to listen to music because that keeps them in a neutral zone without going from this side or that side or what's happening in Pakistan or not. So cricket, you can always talk about and uh, music, obviously, people like. So those are the two issues which were top of my campaign, how to keep people just happy and neutral and just talk about my agenda. Yeah, I know you personally always and APNA as a, as an organization always step stay away from any politics or any controversial talk. So, but cricket is not controversial. Cricket is a passion for Pakistanis. So, yes. what did you feel? How passionate Pakistan community in USA is about cricket? I know we were at the 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 World Cup here with India a couple months ago, and we were like there since morning. It was raining hard. It was almost honestly like an Eid Rath. Although it was during the day, we were just meeting people, hugging people. Everybody's excited, children, old Babaji's like us and younger people and everybody. And we just watched every single ball, hoping that Pakistan will win. And there was a good match in the end. They didn't win. But that just makes me sad. Like for many, many years now, we haven't really won a test match or any other match. And not only we haven't won, I don't see a kind of a happy moment in cricket, when will we win? So it's kind of sad and we want some kind of fix, but it's we're passionate about cricket, we still like cricket, we'll continue to like cricket. But if Pakistan team keeps going downward as it is, it just makes us sad. And that's our bonding as Pakistanis. Other than everything else, we just can talk about cricket to anybody, anytime. Well, remember those days when we used to have cricket parties and uh, whenever there was a match between Pakistan and India or any other big match, we used to have party, we used to bring families, children, everybody would come. But now, for a long time, we did not have who would come to watch Pakistan team losing all the time. So that I don't really think sad. we want to anymore. I, re I remember a few parties at your house and the other friends' house in New Jersey and all nighters and we getting donuts and pizza and everybody's excited, win or lose, there was good matches. But now we don't want to go because it's going to be some shocking news. So we feel like maybe not not go to those parties. Yeah, so you are representation of a big Pakistani organization here. So mm -hmm. through you, I'd like you to tell Pakistan cricket bosses that please fix this problem. We cannot afford to lose this strong bond with Pakistan. What you'd like to say about Pakistan bosses, about cricket? How important is to fix Pakistan cricket? I think so. There are many things Pakistan cannot fix because of economy and extra and politics is complicated, all that. But cricket, we can, I think there is a fix. We have players, they're the same players before. We have younger people there. So I think the fix is like, the better manager, better coaches, better trainers, which are like uh, not based on safarish. And uh, if the team at the top is good, meaning the organizers and coaches and managers, then the players will be fine. Yeah, so we're not going to technical aspect what needs to be done, but it yeah. is important that for community to have a strong bond and for a new generation to have a strong bond with Pakistan, other than their family uh, connection, to have a good cricket team, right? Yeah, like every kid born in America is at somehow connected to baseball, Americans. And we were connected or we are connected to cricket. So if cricket is kind of dying in Pakistan, if we are losing one way of connecting with each other, so it's very important to fix it. It's our passion. This is what people talk about. Yeah, I hope uh, there'll be uh, something will be done on positive basis and we will start thinking and we start seeing some improvement in Pakistan cricket. This is this is a must thing which need to be done. And thank you, Babar, for your time and uh, have a great uh, uh, rest of the weekend. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you, Vash. Thank you, everybody. Khuda okay, now I will turn to my next guest, uh, Dr. Munir Khan. Dr. Munir Khan, he's in Florida in USA. 
he is a always follow cricket. He has played good cricket in Peshawar from uh, club level and at college level. And he is now in Florida and he still plays cricket. And uh, Muni, just tell us briefly how much you follow cricket. And I heard that you travel also for cricket a lot of time. Is that right? Yes, uh, first of all, thank you for having me on your show. Absolutely, like, you know, uh, many of our friends here, we all love cricket. We breathe cricket, actually. Cricket is our life, you know. Um, and that's the time when we really unwind, whether we watch cricket or play cricket, that's a real down time for us. Uh, you know, we have been passionate about cricket since we were little children. While we Once we came to the U.S., we have traveled all over the world following Pakistan cricket. You know, remember, we went together, actually, to Australia to watch the World Cup in 2015. And, you know, we've been to all the other World Cups, too, following the team around. And obviously, just like, you know, your friends uh, said earlier also, we're all very, very disappointed about what's happening to Pakistan cricket right now. Yes, you have a big uh, Pakistan community in Tampa and Florida in general. And I'm sure you are in contact with them. You guys have, have I mean, function all the time. You are in touch with uh, all the other people. What are their feeling about Pakistan cricket? What Pakistan cricket going going through nowadays? I'm sure they 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 are very sad about it. Is that right? So I think I think uh, you know sad is kind of a very mild word. I'll say like it's to describe the feelings uh, of what you know everybody is going through. You see, I will just give you my own example. You know, I'm one of those you know real cricket followers and passionate followers of Pakistan cricket who used to watch every single ball even of the Test match. You know. As you know, it's very difficult to watch test match cricket here in the U.S. because most of the time it's past midnight when the game actually starts for us. But, you know, I'll be up the whole night watching every single ball of a test match and the next morning I'll still go to work. And, you know, that's the kind of uh, passionate fans we are and we were. But now I can tell you this, for more than a year, I've not watched a single ball of Pakistan test cricket or for that matter, you know, any cricket. The only match... I went to watch recently was when we went to New York to watch India versus Pakistan. I met you there also. But otherwise, on television, I've stopped watching Pakistan cricket. And I think that's the biggest loss of Pakistan cricket. They do not understand the people who are running Pakistan cricket into the ground, people in position of authority. Uh, you know, they don't realize the kind of damage they have done to the cricket. I mean, uh, when they lose a fan like myself, uh, you know, who literally breathes cricket and follows the cricket everywhere, watches cricket and you lose somebody like me. Imagine people who are kind of the peripheral fans, you know, who are not as passionate as some of us are. They have all given up on watching this team. And that is the dilemma of Pakistan cricket. Yes, really, really very sad situation because I remember that when in 90s and early 2000s, whenever there's a Pakistan cricket match, we used to have cricket parties. We used to invite our home and go to some people's home and we have a good time and see Pakistan sometimes win, sometimes I mean, loses, but we had a great time. But those parties are gone now. Uh, you can invite people watching Pakistan losing badly, particularly to India. So really sad. And now the situation is getting worse. Can you imagine you call somebody at your home, okay, come on to my home and we're having a party, Pakistan team is playing. Who will come? Nobody, right? So that's, that's really, really bad. So we'll talk about a little more about this. Now let me uh, invite my another guest, Dr. Irfana Khan. Dr. Irfana Khan, she is a doctor, she's a mom, and she's a wife. And also, hers is a big cricket family. And she's a community leader also. She is the president of Apna, New Jersey chapter. So Irfana, please tell us how important is cricket in your family? I know your husband, Mother said he's, I would say, crazy about cricket, is he not? <laughs> he is very crazy about cricket. So first of all, thank you so much, Dr. Aves. Uh, you know, I'm pleased to be here today um, uh, to discuss something very close to uh, my heart, uh, you know, Pakistani cricket. So, um, you know, as a physician, our life's around, uh, life, you know, revolves around complexities of healthcare. But, uh, you know, cricket has always been soul of our family. Um, my husband, uh, Mudassar Safdar, he is, as you said, he's crazy about cricket. He has a rich background in cricket, um, having played in Pakistan. And then um, currently he's serving as um, ICC certified umpire and, um, you know, level two qualified coach. Um, I have three boys. Um, they carry the same passion. And um, as a family, we, we, we not only follow cricket, but we live cricket, actually. 
Um, so, um, I mean, we traveled to Australia uh, in 2020 for, uh, you know, to watch the T20 World Cup and, uh, you know, just cheer for our team. And then this year also to West Indies and USA to support our team. So this is very difficult time for all of us, uh, you know, uh, you know, I, I want to touch upon a few concerns uh, that, you know, not have been bothering only me, but I think most of the, uh, you know, cricket fans that, you know, we have the most, some of the most talented players in the world, but we often struggle, you know, with consistency in our performance. So um, I, I don't know whether it's, uh, you know, batting lineup collapsing under pressure or, you know, our bowlers uh, losing their rhythm. Uh, in crucial moment, and this inconsistency is costing us a lot. Absolutely, they're losing absolutely. Our, yeah. So let's see example like your family. You have boys. I mean, Marshall are very handsome young boys, and they're passionate about cricket like uh, their father. But again, how they can we get excited about Pakistan cricket? They can't. And when we were growing up, or actually grown up already, we had many great cricketers we used to follow. We like to emulate them, and we like to ball fast like them. And now a young cricketer like your boys, who they would like to follow in Pakistan cricket? Nobody now, right? That's a sad part. Yeah. I mean, my husband, you know, he took them yesterday also and today, both days. They are with Ahmad Shahzad and Haris Rauf. They took their cricket bats to get the autographs, you know, from them. And uh, But they need to watch good cricket, which is not happening these days. And to watch good cricket where Pakistan team plays well. I don't care if they lose or win. I mean, that's a part of the game, but there should be some excitement. There should be right. some, you know, that uh, some fight to be given by Pakistan cricket. And they behave and act and play like a professional and like they have passion for cricket, which is lacking now, right? Right. And I feel like cricket is not just a physical game. It's a mental one. And I think uh, our... Uh, our um, team should not only work on improving their skills, they should also work on the, their mental toughness, you know, to stand at the time of crucial, you know, competition. So that's great. I just uh, want to say to Pakistan cricket bosses that cricket is not just a male game now. It's like a, as popular or pretty very good popularity it has in a female uh, population also, like uh, Dr. Irfana. Uh, Khan just showed us. I mean, she actually talked about some very technical aspects of uh, Pakistan cricket. So they should be keep in mind that cricket is not just sport. It's a strong bond between Pakistanis living overseas and Pakistan. So please, for God's sake, do something, whatever it takes. I mean, revive Pakistan cricket before it dies. Okay. So Irfana, thank you so much uh, for your participation and for your time. And uh, I'm Hope that boxing cricket will be revived. Okay, so now we are three of us, uh, Dr. Munir Khan, Al Hussain, and I. We need to talk about about cricket uh, technical aspects. Uh, what I mean that uh, what's going on with cricket and what the changes they have made for next tracks in Multan, and what do you think is that good or bad? And uh, so we need to talk about that. First of all, Afzal, I will go to you. What do you think about the changes they made for Multan Test? What do you think about that? Well, um, as, as, as we discussed, uh, you know, first of all, um, thank you for having me on the show again, and the management and everyone at uh, Q's. Uh, it's our fourth episode, and uh, we're doing really well. And we've been discussing this before as well, that if we got to follow a plan, we got to we we got to stick to the plan. It cannot be changed in the middle of the series, and you cannot do tweaks. Like if you lose a game and then you decide to change a team altogether, or like then you make decisions um, in panic. So this is what's happening here as well uh, in Pakistan cricket as well. They lost a test match, and all of a sudden they've made some changes in the team. They've appointed a new selection committee panel and. And so, and we've been seeing all these things happening from the last six, seven months, and maybe more. So every, like even this management has taken a lot of decisions, appointing Wahab Riyaz, then changing um, selection committee, then appointing coaches from from captain to um, 
not just the team related stuff but also the organization related stuff as well so uh, i'm really really obviously this 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 thing was um, quite expected the performance was quite expected from pakistan and how they they perform but what's happening um, in pakistan cricket is is really uh, it's disturbing for even if it, it is for me like who follows cricket um as uh, i i also work for cricket as a broadcaster but then i have that love and uh, passion for cricket following pakistan cricket so i don't know what is the direction what we're doing there is no end to it so uh, let's see it's to see into rest babar i reckon uh, babar needs a bit of rest as opportunity um, for kamran gulam to come and score run. and uh, then again um, we we need to really be consistent in this approach as as these youngsters men in they need to score yeah, runs right. it cannot be like so, they need to opportunities these opportunities with both hands do you know any cricketer xbox or cricketer who has not been a selector or something like this lately i mean every week we see a new selection committee and practically i mean you lose one test everything is changed and new body comes and then i mean how can that work i mean selectors mean that you have yeah that's what that's what i'm right? saying i'll pick up a call i'll i'll pick up my phone i'll say all right dr ravas are you free so come and join uh, our selection committee panel all right i'll call uh, dr suhail or i'll call amjad so every week or every uh, month or like two months whenever something happens maybe it's to divert that attention from 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 the main thing like we lost the game so now the attention is more towards the selection committee and the panel and not much talking happening why we lost so maybe it can be a media stunt i, I don't know exactly. that that's quite possible so i'll come back to you afzal uh, let me talk to munir munir have you ever seen a cricket umpire with very limited first class experience has it appointed to select national test team did it surprise you like munir uh, what's the name uh, uh, the dar alim dar Alim Dar has been appointed as one of the selectors. Give me a break, please. So, Aves, I mean, you know, there's a there's a man. He's a cricket player. He goes to see his doctor, who's a psychiatrist. So, this cricketer goes to visit psychiatrist's office, and the psychiatrist asks him, "Why are you here?" He said, "Well, you know, doctor, I cannot bat properly. I cannot bowl properly. I cannot catch the cricket ball. I don't know what I'm going to do." so the doctor says i think you should try to find another job and the patient says no but i'm going to play for pakistan tomorrow a test match so this is the you know kind of you know situation pakistan cricket is in right now and appointment of alim dar basically you know is a clear reflection of the disintegration of a process or a due process that should be happening in any cricket board you see the thing is as the chinese say the fish always rots from the top and that's the dilemma we have in pakistan unfortunately it's not a political stand that but whatever is happening in the country you know cricket board and the cricket team is a reflection of that bigger you know uh, process that the country is going through you know so now we have a board which does not have any credibility why because a person who's in charge of the board has no qualification to be in charge of a cricket board the only reason you know the cricket every time a new government comes in they bring their blue eyed boys to head the cricket board even though they they don't even understand the basics of cricket i can challenge you that if somebody puts mr mohsin nakvi on a you know live tv show and ask him name different fielding positions in a cricket field and he won't be able to do that you know so the thing is when you have people like him you know kind of become the kings of a cricket team that is what happens and in, what happened in pakistan cricket and i just don't want to blame him alone because he is just part of the system which has been destroying pakistan cricket systematically over the last several years now and now everything has finally imploded you see this implosion of this team did not happen under shan masood it did not happen in just last six test matches or whatever it has been going on for years and years you know pakistan cricket was a great you know this skyscraper which was very proud built tall building but you know it takes time to destroy such buildings and that's what we are finally everything imploded of what happened 10 years ago what happened 15 years ago
You see, the thing is, when anybody who understands cricket, the only serious cricket which matters is test cricket. That is where you define a team. Great teams are always good test team also. Why is Australia the best team in the world? Because they have always been the best test team in the world also. As a result, they are always in the finals of one day or a T20 World Cup also. They may have hiccups here and there. We all understand that. It's part of a cricket culture. But it's not like you will not see them in a final for 10 years in a row. It does not work like that. You know, they may be out for one season. Next season, they'll be back again in the final. Why? Because they have a system. Unfortunately, in cricket in Pakistan, we have complete dishonesty at every level. You have corruption at every level. It starts from the cricket board and then it goes into your regional associations. We know that and you know that, that even for regional associations, the selectors who are selecting, for example, the team for Peshawar or Karachi or Lahore, they will actually take money from young cricketers to select them for to play for their associations. How many people can pay those money? You know, there might be some players who are really, really good and they just can't make it because they don't have the money for it. I'm not saying every selector is corrupt, but we all know that this corruption has seeped into the system at every level, at every level. And now we see the final outcome, complete implosion of the cricket. It's the greatest embarrassment we have faced as a sporting nation, in my opinion. It's much worse than hockey or squash because cricket was supposed to be our, you know, uh, whatever. Now, for anybody who wants to revive Pakistan cricket, you just cannot do it by appointing Aleem Dar as a chief selector or a part of the selection panel bringing back Akib Javed or anybody you can bring back right now. The cricket is not going to be fixed like this. The way to fix Pakistan cricket is you have to go back in time. You have to analyze the mistakes which were committed by dishonesty. You can commit honest mistake, but you can be dishonest also. Honest mistakes never bring down anything. But dishonesty, when it becomes part of a process, that will destroy anything good. So we need to go back in time. And we need to do thorough introspection. We need to divide Pakistan cricketing by eras, you know, 50s, 60s, 70s, 80s, 90s, 2010, 2020, and now to this date, and see what happened in each of those 10 years. Who did what? Which captain did what? Which selector did what? And that's how we will be able to analyze all the mistakes which were committed. And then we say, you know what, in future, this will not happen. So we yeah. have to do a lot mistakes need to be corrected. Yeah, that's for sure that this is not a quick fix and we have to work on, on a long-term basis. Some short-term, uh, I mean, decisions also need to be made, but it will not going to fix in the next six months or a year. We have to do a long-term planning. When it comes to corruption, I know we can talk about a lot about corruption, but see, at every level, even some those honest crypto, like, uh, I mean, Rashid Latif is considered to be an honest person. I believe he is an honest. But look at his, like, a statement about Barber just uh, two weeks ago. He said that Babar is the greatest player Pakistan has produced in the last three decades. Give me a break, please. Is he or he's not? So like basically, we don't know that Babar is, Babar is way overrated. And because Rashid Latif is saying because he has to be in some groups good books. And yesterday, when Babar was dropped, Fakhar Zaman said, oh, we should not have dropped him. Look at, he is a legend. He's not a legend. And look at the uh, Kohli. He was not, you know, dropped when he was at bad pitch. Come on, Bobber is not Kohli, is he? I mean, Afzal, you think that, he, okay, is he Kohli? I mean, he's uh, not even close. Um, I'm, I'm, first of all, I really want to thank you for having uh, Doc Saab on the show. I'm really impressed by the way his, his cricketing knowledge and the way he thinks. And that's the that's, that's what this show is all about. And I'm, I'm really impressed by his uh, knowledge and what he thinks about cricket and especially Pakistan cricket. So uh, coming back to your question, this is this this is where problem lies. Like everyone wants to be expert and not wants to do their particular job. Fakhar Zaman, all right, he's he's one of the very talented good cricketer around Pakistan circuit. So he needs to focus on his game. So whatever is happening, uh, whatever the decision is being taken, he shouldn't be comparing situations like oh like. Is he good enough as Steve Smith or is he good enough as Joe Root or X, Y, Z, whatever. But if 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 it is a bad patch for uh, Barbarazam and we, we, we just one of our uh, 
panelists now mentioned that it's it's mental toughness as well it's it's not just to do with with your skill always so power needs a break and if it's given now it's it's not no point for these players young players to take on social media and tweet anything they want yes exactly so i think so, best okay. just to uh, please you know just to kind of reinforce the same point because i don't want this thought to escape uh, my mind so you see the thing is the biggest problem that we are facing right now is complete mismanagement of everything you know i'll give you a small example you know rahul dravid we know he was a great player probably one of the all time greats of cricket not just indian cricket he went through a bad patch you know what he did he came to new york he went to one of the best ophthalmologists who were there who specializes with some something to do with sports and he you know worked on his hand eye coordination because there was something wrong with his you know side the way he was looking at the ball and their ophthalmologist actually worked with him he gave him special exercises so his hand eye coordination can improve he went back and started scoring centuries again this is how a functioning board works they scientifically try to identify problems and then find the best people in the world to rectify them the kind of injury that bumrah went through surgery on his spine i can guarantee you if he was playing for pakistan he would have never played cricket again i can guarantee you that just look what they did to asanul i mean you know being a cricket lover i was literally waiting for two years for pakistan to visit australia to play the three test series last year i was so excited i said we will have asanul we'll have naseem shah we will have shain shah fridi and this will be one incredible pace attack on those bouncy tracks to really challenge australia but what happened before the series shayda fridi was visiting us uh, a couple of years ago uh, in tampa for his fundraisers so i spoke to him i said shahid you know you need to tell shaheen afridi you know him well that the way he dives is very very unnatural way of diving he is going to seriously hurt himself he said oh maybe you should talk to him yourself i said fine i'll talk to him so he called shaheen afridi he did not pick up the phone but he said okay leave him a message so i left him a message said, look shaheen Pakistan does not need you to be diving to so to save some three one or two extra runs. We need you to be bowling at your best at 140 miles plus. Save yourself. The way you dive is completely wrong. Work with your fielding coaches so you can learn how to properly dive. Otherwise, you will hurt yourself. Obviously, nothing was done about it. Few months later, he fell and then injured his knee and never recovered from it. And he lost his pace after he came back. He never was the same bowler again. look what they did to asanullah asanullah was literally the find of the last 10 years when it comes to fast bowlers the guy was bowling at close to 150 miles he was strongly built he could have destroyed opposition on bouncy tracks of australia he have a problem with his elbow and everybody misdiagnosed it to the point the guy is completely ruined he is not coming back now you know i saw a video of pakistani team cricket team's physio now this is unbelievable the team doctor when shahid afridi uh, shahid afridi used to play for cricket it was from several years ago that video and he was giving an intra articular joint injection uh, to the right knee of uh, of uh, shahid, shahid afridi the guy was not even using like septic techniques he was not like even sterilizing the area he just put a needle in really? i said oh my god wow. give him a septic oh. joint so this is the problem we have you know we have cronyism we do not have professionalism we have people like mohsin nakvi who do not understand the anything about cricket and just not him but people even before him also that's how it was it was just my personal likings or disliking avas is my friend he may not be the best person for the job hey avas i am the chair now you get to get do this job you will be the team doctor you will be the team physio this is where we are fallen behind and we have ruined the careers of our potential cricketers and now you know the cricket is uh, looking at uh, you know whatever we are looking at now so i think this is just one small example of the breakdown of processes ideally the pakistan cricket board should have a process we are all here you know we know some of the best sporting uh, surgeons and specialists in the world who live in us you know you can have your disagreement with us but you cannot argue about greatness of the medical medicine which is practiced in this country we are far ahead of anybody else in the world just because we have so much money to spend here you know after all we are spending almost 3 trillion dollars on healthcare alone in this country
So that money produces brilliant results. And when it comes to sports medicine, nobody can compete with the US sports medicine physicians. We have cure for everything. They should have a process. They could have involved anybody from this country who understands cricket. We could have found them the best possible physicians to protect these athletes who were stars, who could have really served Pakistan cricket. And we would have won a test match in Australia, if not the entire series, if you had all your fast bowlers working at their best for that series. What happened? We lost 3-0. You know, and after that, I've never seen Pakistan test match again since then. So this is just one small example of where things have gone wrong with this cricket board. There's no professional. And then you mentioned very rightly about Rashid Latif. We all respect Rashid Bhai. I think he's a very honest man. But, you know, as an independent person living here in uh, Florida, I can tell you this. One of the major problems with Pakistan cricket is that we have dishonesty at every level, not only in the cricket board or in the selection committee. But the biggest problem is that we have dishonesty amongst the so-called cricket experts. They may have played few test matches here and there. Just because you have played test cricket does not mean that you understand cricket better than us. You don't, you know. You'll have to read so much about cricket and analyze every player to then talk to us and say, you know what, I understand cricket better than you. You know, many of these people, they don't, but they, what they do is they are opinion makers for Pakistan cricket. They will come on television channels and they all have their favorites and they'll be pushing those favorites. And that's where the problem comes. They affect the selection committee by pushing their favorites, you know. And this is the problem we are facing. They have ruined the careers of so many potential players who could have served the cricket well and they destroyed them completely. You see, the thing is, what they do in Pakistan is players in any other country when you see the player is not performing he's either given a rest or somebody else is given a chance in pakistan our best players who have gone through the grinds of domestic cricket they don't select them they don't select them until they get old number one number two they it creates doubts in their mind we all understand who have played cricket cricket is a mind game the day you are you have when you're walking into bed you have a little bit of a doubt you are not going to score runs and that's exactly what's happening with these players, yeah, that some of them yeah. perform. Absolutely. Really, really. Yeah. I think the best way to fix Pakistan cricket is don't do what Pakistan cricket has been doing for the last couple of years. Simple as that. Just to do a different way. Okay, uh, Afzal, let's uh, wrap up. Uh, I would like to have your opinion about the team which would be playing and uh, next test at Multan. So... I'm sure the openers will stay, like uh, maybe uh, Sam Ayub. You think he will be replaced by uh, Rara? And also, would you go with the two spinners and the fast bowler as, uh, what was his name, uh, Hamza? And also uh, Amir Jamal? Or you would like to have another fast bowler and two spinner, two fast bowler, and a quote unquote all rounder uh, that is Ala? Yeah. So, so before uh, sharing my lineup and uh, my team um, for the next game, I, I just want to ask you both a question. You just mentioned about corruption. So uh, is it right to say corruption is only what it deals with money or corruption is like doing things on political basis as well or uh, making choices of uh, what what you want to do is that corruption as well or is just related to money uh, I, I just want a one liner no, from both of you it's not I mean, it doesn't have to be detailed a broad, you know, word i mean it could be anything for example like uh, uh, rashid latif i don't think he took money to say that sort of things so basically but he knows he's a very intelligent person and he's an honest person to his own extent but when he said about babar this thing I don't think he took money from Babar or anybody. He just wants to be in a good mm. books. That is an, if you know that you are not telling the truth, that is a dishonesty. That is a corruption also. That's a different level of corruption. Yeah, when people take money to do bad things, that's a different level of corruption. Munir, what do you think? No, no, 100%. I mean, you know, money is a smaller part of corruption. I think the bigger corruption is dishonesty in processes, in selection, in how you present different players. I think that's a bigger challenge right now. I mean, and th those corrupt decisions actually cost you the test series after test series. And then, you know, you end up being down to wherever you are right now. And that's where the biggest challenge is that, you know, they, you see that my, uh, I know uh, maybe you are running out of time here, but this is very important. You see, the thing is, 
cricket is a mind game a player who's in great form he's at the top of the world you know and when you keep ignoring them and keep playing players who are failing again and again so now this guy is sitting outside he's saying you know what can i do to get in the team and now he's create he's getting doubts in his mind so when he actually goes out to bat he cannot even perform because he's under so much pressure because of you guys you know because you did not put him in the team when it, he should have been in the team and then that ruins their career you i mean you know they are playing kam gulam kamran or somebody else no kamran gulam is just one you see the i think the biggest problem start you see the last 6 years after misbah and yunus retired 7 uh, 8 year whatever that has been that has been the worst era of pakistan cricket since 1952 when we got our uh, you know test uh, status since then until 2024 the last 6 7 years have been the worst time for pakistan cricket it is pretty incredible that this has happened in our lifetime the worst time last 6 7 years why did it happen like this why because as soon as misbah and yunus retired if anybody has any honest in selection they would have put pick fawad alam and put him in the test side they did not what happened they had a series in uh, uh, ue against the new zealand and we lost that test series because the batsmen who were playing they were so scared of playing their left arm ejaz patel they ended up losing the series they could not even chase 135 runs and lost a test match and the series with it even though at that time fawad alam was at the peak he was the best player of spin in the country at that time and they did not put him in the team it cost you the test series and that's how teams go down when you don't put players when they are at their peak same thing they did with um, uh, kamran gulam they have ruined him i don't know how he'll perform in the test match but i can tell you this he must have so many demons in his mind when he's going out to bat that i just don't know how he's going to perform and then they did yeah. the same thing to saheb zada and you know they are they did the same thing to salahuddin you know he was unbelievable domestic player salahuddin he used to like he had some i don't know how like you really made test player who had the patience who has yeah. centuries and centuries really, after year really. after year he was your perfect test yes. player absolutely they ruined him and that's how you know this he, is what the dalit pakistan cricket yeah they they ruined him and that's just the example of just few of the players we don't have enough time but we can cover the list and then we can tell you exactly yeah. where they were wrong we and they would were definitely would we'll talk about more but i think we are running out of time so uh, thank you and yeah. there's also so, uh, back coming back to your question i'm sorry i just uh, took this uh, debate into different uh, aspect different level so uh, my thing is like uh, as we discussed two weeks ago like kamran gulam can only make way in the team if babar azam is not playing so now they've dropped him so kamran gulam if he's playing it's the best time for him uh, to to shine and we know he's capable of he's he's got more than 1500 and he's capable enough technical and let's see how he goes and in the last segment and also mentioned that we got to we got to have two spinners we know we don't have quality spinners in pakistan circuit but whatever we have we at least should have against england in these conditions you should go with two spinners you cannot hang around with saima you you cannot hang around with uh, aga uh, because they are not uh, quality spinners they are just part part timers right so you got to play with two spinners and then uh, amir jamal we saw some something um, good from him in the field catching was good but uh, his bowling sh- should have been should have been better but i think you 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 just mentioned in the last episode as well that he's not fit enough yet so let's see how he goes and then again uh, uh, we we got to we got to see now south shakil he got to perform he did a bit but this is not how you perform like 30 40 or 50 now if you are uh, in a position where everyone is counting on you you got to lead as as a as a as a good batter who can score big runs so now is the time but again uh, the morale is down in the camp and uh, i'm not expecting any 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 drastic change in the team to be honest uh, and the result as well so last week when we spoke my prediction was that pakistan will lose the test match at the end of the like the last session of the fourth day i was a little bit wrong yeah uh, but anyway i mean but again my prediction about losing pakistan is, i mean came out to be true so what do you guys think that what will be the result of the second test at multan okay munir what do you think i mean 
any any hope that Pakistan will be able to draw it? So I mean, you know, if you just looking only from the cricketing aspect, I mean, you know, you know, the team is under the pump now, and so the everybody will have so much doubt when they are going out to play. Especially now they have seen that even you know Babar is drops on a team, so everybody will be feeling very very vulnerable. Vulnerable teams usually don't do very well, so I don't expect any good outcome here either. You know. Exactly. Do you have any hope? Well, um, as the Pakistani, you know, uh, we all we we know we we don't want to uh, really think that Pakistan will lose, but uh, as as a cricket fan, as especially Pakistan cricket fan, in last one or two years, we have gone to the lowest in every format. We have lost to USA. For God's sake, it's like, uh, all right, uh, people say when we lost from Ireland, it was one of the lowest points. We lost from Bangladesh. But losing from USA, it is, for me, it is the lowest point in Pakistan uh, cricket history because they were playing qualifiers. They came from 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 the qualifiers three years ago. They were playing in Cayman Islands against against a twenty uh, against a team who is uh, twenty one miles island. So losing from a team uh, like you and then losing a Test match after scoring five hundred and fifty runs, uh, only Pakistan can do that. We That's we knew uh, in the past as well. We have the habit, but then uh, even now. I don't see any anything special uh, with Barber going out. Uh, maybe a miracle can help again. And, and against an English side like this, we were not competent enough to uh, win against Bangladesh. So against England, it's 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 uh, it's easy to it's say that uh, we cannot Captain win this time. Stokes coming back. He's a very positive guy, and he puts like a lot of energy into the team. And they are ready for anything Pakistan offers. I mean, their spin attack is better than they have more variety spinner than Pakistan possesses at the moment. So let's see. My only interest is that how the new player, you know, they they, they play. Uh, like that, Kamran, that's it. Who, yeah, that's it. And uh, if Ferreira makes it to the playing level, see how the young player does, and what I mean, what he's made of. And uh, if uh, the Mahnas, the new spinner, if he plays, which most likely he play, that he is a very young player, and I think a lot of promise uh, shown by him so far. So that's the only interest. I'm not uh, looking forward that Pakistan will, you know, that uh, will win or even able to draw that. And uh, hope so, but I will not bet on that. Okay, no, I think thank you so much for but your opinion. One thing, and, uh, uh, sure, you go ahead. OS, one thing before we go, uh, quickly before we go about the US cricket, you know, uh, that was mentioned. You know, it's my prediction uh, that US in the next 10 years, USA will be one of the top four teams in the world in all formats. This is my prediction. And the reason I say in, that is in, because... In the longer version also? In the longer version also, yes. And I'll, I'll, I'll tell you why. And just, I'm talking about 2035, just put down somewhere that year 2035. And I'll tell you why. Because the kind of cricket infrastructure that is being developed in this country is incredible. Pakistan, forget about it. Many of the test playing nations don't even come close to what's happening here. They are so organized. There's so much money being spent. Right now, USA has more club cricketers playing club cricket than even Pakistan does. These club cricketers will grow up and they will become really, really good cricketers because of all the amenities which are available to them in this country. The kind of ground that we play on, we can only dream of in Pakistan. So, I mean, this country will produce some tremendous cricketers and cricket teams and it will be ex at the expense of many other cricketing nations. For example, you know, if there's a good fast bowler in Jamaica, guess what? He's coming to the university here on a scholarship and he'll be playing for the USA. There's some really good batsmen in South Africa. This country is going to suck the talent of the rest of the world just because so, of yeah. the United States. So, of people say brain drain, USA, as well as sports are concerned, they do talent drain. I mean, they, they attract players all over the world in different sports and basketball particularly and in other, and they, they stay here in tennis, swimming, everything. So maybe the cricket will go the same way. Okay, great. Uh, thank you again, for Munir, for your participation of Zal always. Uh, we enjoyed your expert opinion and we'll see you guys next week. Thank you. Thank you.